Now that we understand how one-way ANOVA works, let's talk about this idea of a post hoc test. So we found a difference, but we don't actually know which groups are different because ANOVA doesn't really test that. Uh, luckily, this is just a few extra clicks in SPSS. So when we have this significant F test, that says that somewhere there's a difference, but we don't really know where the difference is. So instead, we're going to use a post hoc test. There are a lot of post hoc tests, as you will see in SPSS. I'm going to tell you the main three that we're going to focus on. I'll drop a couple other names just because you might see them in articles as you read. Each one tells you where the difference is between these groups. They're all kind of like t-tests, but they're accounting for a lot of other things that are happening. So here's the most common, Tukey's, Chaffee, Games Howl, and then these other three that you might see. <laughs> Couple of terms, first of all, you need to understand the idea of liberal and conservative. So liberal means that we are rejecting falsely too often. <laughs> Basically, a real alpha is higher than we think, so we are less than 95% confident. We're allowing to find a difference um, and kind of relaxing the alpha a little bit. Uh, conservative is the exact opposite. So we're actually more than 95% confident. We're having stricter boundaries for us to actually find significance. But when we are looking at our alpha and we're looking at our p-value, it stays the same. Just know that the test itself is being more conservative or more liberal. So Tukey's HSD is the most popular and the most commonly used. This is kind of your go-to. It looks at all pairwise group comparisons. So if we have three groups, it's looking at the comparison of group one and two, group one and three, groups two and three, it looks at all the possible combinations. We do need equal group sizes, or at least fairly equal, um, and our population variance has to be equal. So we have to meet that HOV, that homogeneity of variance assumption to use Tukey. Chaffee does the same thing, it's just more conservative. It's actually the most conservative post hoc test that we have choices from. Um, it's not good if we have large differences in our sample size. So if our sample sizes, especially as we get more and more group, if they're not fairly equal, then this gets a little bit unreliable. Games Howl. So it's kind of like a Welch's t-test, which is our most common t-test that we used from intro stats. Uh, it's very tukey like so it's kind of the go-to. The alpha might actually be lower, so it's, actually, it's more conservative than tukey but it's less conservative than Chaffee. Um, and this one accounts for a violation of homogeneity of variance. So this is our go-to if we violate HOV. There are other post hoc tests. So Newman Cools uh, tends to be very liberal. So if you have a relaxed alpha, this might be okay. If you're just trying to find differences and you aren't as concerned with that 95% confidence, you're dropping it to 90 or lower, then you could use that one. Duncan is very liberal and it only is reliable within three groups. Fisher's LSD um, used to be really popular and it's not used very much at all anymore. But you might see these in articles, so I wanted to mention them. And there are so many more once you get to SPSS, you'll see. So here's your decision. If you have not violated homogeneity of variance, use two keys. If two keys shows you significant differences, then you can go back and try with Chaffee. If Chaffee is significant, then report that you did that because it's more conservative, so it looks better. Sorry. If it is not significant, then just report two keys. But I will tell you that if Tukey's is not significant, neither is Chaffee's. If you have a violation of homogeneity of variance, then we use Games Howl. So under the one-way ANOVA tab that we've already played with, there is a post hoc tab to the side, which I started in the last PowerPoint. There's your three choices, and you can see so many others. 
Uh, Bonferroni is another one that you might see a lot in articles actually. So you click the one you want, you hit continue, you hit OK, and you get an extra table. Here's what this table is telling you. Significance, this is your p-value. So you just run through all of these values and you find the ones that are significant. So this one's not, this one's not, this one is. It's less than 0 0.05. So this is telling me that my A group and my C and below group are significantly different, but there is no difference between, no significant difference, <laughs> between A and my high B and A and my low B students. I continue down. There is no difference between A and high B. We already knew that. There's also no difference, or there is a significant difference between my high B students and my low B students. There is a significant difference between my high B students and my C and below students because these are significant. And we just continue down. And that tells me which combination of groups are significant. Keep in mind that this is like a correlation table where you get the same information a couple times. So right here it's telling me 0 0.009. That's also 0 0.009 because it's the same thing. A compared with C and below, A compared with C and below. So we get a running list of what groups are actually significantly different. And then we have to go back to effect size. So we already have ADA covered. We know how to find that. And eta is the effect size for the entire ANOVA together. But for each individual group, once we find a difference, we talk about its individual effect size, which is Cohen's D. We talked about this already. We know how to uh, do it from our last weeks. And we just click on this website, type in the values, and we go through. By the way, this is mean difference. To find the mean of group A and group B, we go back to that explore option and we look at all of those means that we've already looked at from the output in the last video. So that's where we're going to get information from this and talk about differences, which groups higher, which groups lower, etc. So take a minute, well, a few minutes, <laughs> and go back to the three problems we did in class and add in the post hoc tests.